So thank you all for coming. We're going to get started in a minute. Um, uh, my name is George Lucy. I'm the pastor here at St. President Sissy. This is our associate pastor, Father Pat Kane, and Eric Goldman. Eric, Eric, Eric is an honorary Franciscan. He said, uh, come up, Eric, please. Eric said he had to make a confession. He's been presenting himself as a Franciscan for months. Right? But he's got a very Franciscan spirit. Uh, I just want to Father uh, Gigi Reyes and Father Andreas, uh, who is from Uruguay, and Father uh, Diego Bernardo, who is from Colombia. So we thought it might be important we organize this. I'm going to stop and let Eric and, and Patrick speak into this in a moment. Our videographer, Pat, is uh, putting some things together for us, which is just a little bit of a short delay. So smile, because you'll be on TV, right? Yeah, right, right. right. So, uh, uh, but thank you all for being here. There are some people we did uh, uh, this a little earlier this morning, around 10.30. So there are people waiting for us up by the tree, and we'll join them up there. That's all right. And then uh, and we do what we always do when, uh, when there's a, a great injustice in our land. Uh, we stand up and say no more, right? And, we, and by the way, I think here is Lenridge and the surrounding areas. Your presence here will have a ripple effect, right? Nothing, nothing that we do for the good uh, uh, goes without uh, that returning uh, to the community in some way. If you get a moment, just look at the donations that people have brought. They line the hallway and they go around. That's what community is, right? Recognizing that we care for each other uh, uh, in moments of great uh, need and that we won't really uh, tolerate uh, families being separated or children being taken from us. No matter what you feel about immigration, this is just morally wrong. It's essentially wrong. That's all, right? So uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna meet you in the back. I don't have the best voice, but I sing loud. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. thank you. Uh, well, thank you all for coming. Uh, I was gonna say a few words about the Center for Family Services, and then I'm going to. Uh, so the Center for Family Services is a not-for-profit, and they do, they have a, a number of wonderful programs that support families uh, that are having challenges or in crisis. The program we are supporting is their Juntos program. Through that program, they are providing housing for 10 teenage boys, 10 teenage girls, four teenage moms and their children who have crossed the southern border. They are unaccompanied and they are undocumented. So they're all being housed uh, locally in South Jersey and we have uh, taken in an incredible amount of clothing and, and um, gift certificates the, the, and toiletries just to help these kids, you know, settle in and um, have what they need as they go on their path. Um, and thank you all for supporting us in, in our efforts. Um, hi, my name is Father Pat Kane. I am at St. Francis of Assisi. If you did not get a handout, um, if you want, I've got extras here and there's more. And just briefly, the first two pages, the first two pages is the actual petition we asked you to sign. If you did, that will include you when we send this. Um, the third sheet is part of the email from the woman in South Jersey who runs the nonprofit where a number of these kids are being um, held. And in the fourth sheet is, we will be singing, We Shall Overcome on a March. Luckily, Father Jimmy is here to lead us in song because we don't want to hear George or myself sing. <laughs> lead you in song. <laughs> but I want to thank you all for coming. Um, I'm, I'm sure we're going to connect again. And hopefully we're going to connect fairly soon and have, have a celebratory party. But it might be a little bit too soon to plan the party now. So without further ado, Father Jimmy. <laughs> Let's all sing together, uh, we shall overcome, right? So if I, I miss some notes, it's uh, overseeing me. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, we're going to ask for a quick change on that. Um, if we can do this at, and then we'll proceed up. Okay. We'll do it in procession and not do it now. Okay. If that's okay. Right. I have to save my, my throat outside. <laughs> so, um, Father Andreas is with us from Uruguay, and we're going to ask him to recount a little bit of his own knowledge and on this topic. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, 
Can you hear me from here? Yes. You, feel, you feel like go to the mic? No. Okay. I'd like to start in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, my name is Father Andrew. I'm a Catholic priest from the American National Catholic Church. We are an all-inclusive church. We are not affiliated with Rome. If you need more details about uh, this church, you can Google it. I call it St. Google. You can go to St. Google and find out about us. What I'm here, as probably you can tell at this point, I'm an immigrant, and I've been working with the immigrant community for the past 10 years. One uh, of my duties, my work, is to try to teach local immigrants about the American society, how to blend in with society, learn the language, do the GED program, and go on and on and on, and try to make these people feel welcome in our country. So, I have this speech prepared for today, but I think I'm going to share with you one, one, one fact, one example of one fact. Uh, they really changed my life. And I think the people that knew this family changed their life too. And I apologize for my English, but I still take the English class. Can you understand? Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Let me breathe. Okay. Father Chidi, okay, you go like this if I go too long, okay? I got a tendency to talk way too much. This family, uh, it was a young family, no family yet. It was a young couple. They were engaged. She was young, really young. Uh, and they were getting ready to get married. And she became pregnant before marriage. And they were in this country uh, where if you are not married, you have a baby, it's a big issue. Even to the point that the future husband was to the point to run away and leave her behind. This family was really poor. A really poor family is struggling day by day. And I want to say, boys, sometimes even go hungry, go to bed hungry. And for us in America, probably this kind of stuff is so far, you know, to understand because we have been blessed right, since, since the beginning. Unfortunately for this family, uh, the government, the evil government of that society, of that country, it was ruling with evil. And in the middle of the night, this family had to rush out from their place. They pick up whatever they can hand on their hands and start walking in the middle of the night. I don't know exactly the details, but I'm assuming if this family walk in the middle of the night, they didn't have enough time to go to the embassy <coughs> and apply for the right paperwork to go to that land where they were looking and seeking protection. I'm assuming that this family crossed the desert suffering with a lot of pain, with a baby in their hands, and trying to arrive to this great nation, of, to this land. They told me I have five minutes or two minutes, so I'm going to keep it short. <laughs> I'm assuming that this man, I don't know by, by, by fact, but working with immigrants for a long time, I'm assuming that this man worked in many different things and trying to support his family, even that he probably didn't speak the language. Probably he they don't know the culture, but he, he has to do whatever he has to do to support his family, right? And the story goes on and on and on. Fortunately, this family came back to their country. And you, at this moment, oh, tell me what is the sad part about this story. The sad part about this story is our president knows this story. He knows his story. Because the family that I'm talking about is the Holy Family. When Blessed Mary, Saint Joseph, and baby Jesus had to immigrate to Egypt because they were persecuting, they were trying to kill baby Jesus, and they were trying to kill this family. Now, can you imagine if the rules of immigration that we have today were at that time and place? 
What would have happened with baby Jesus? They would have put it away in a cage and wait for the right paperwork. Myself, I like to consider myself as a citizen of heaven. How beautiful thing, right? God created us without titles. He loves us. We, may, we might share different beliefs, different things, but we are only one family under God's side, right? And I think, I don't have enough time. If you, you want the second part of this, you can come back to Madison Sunday. <laughs> and the second part. But the story goes on and on and on. And I just want to share that with you because that family changed my life, the Holy Family. And working with illegal immigrants, I see that family uh, many, many times during my prison. Thank you. Right now, Mitchell Cameron okay, to ask George Lucy uh, to come up. He is going to say some stuff. We will then march out to the corner. If that's good, we'll go over to the grass and we'll sing We Shall Overcome. I'd ask them to do a moment of silence up there. And then we're going to ask people for your comments on what you have to say on this. Okay? So, without further ado. I wanted to, uh, my name is George Lucy, but thank you for being here. Uh, Eric and Father Pat really put this together. Father Andreas and Nico Bernardo are members of our clergy, and you know as well as I do that uh, when you encounter someone from uh, uh, another uh, culture or another place, it's hard to characterize everyone, right, in a, in a different, uh, in a negative tone. And so Father Andreas and Dika Bernardo, uh, as well as Father Gidi, have really, uh, in our country, uh, uh, struggled in so many ways as immigrants, in some of the, in some of the very real ways that you and I uh, can support. This behavior of our government is insupportable. It just is insupportable. insupportable. And so what we're doing here today is just trying to make a statement as a community, surrounding communities, uh, Montclair, Caldwell, Glenridge, West Orange, Orange, Newark, we're just coming together as a people uh, to stand witness that this is not okay for us. It just is not okay. I think the effects of us being here might indeed have some tremendous ripple effects around the world. There are people like you and I gathering all over our country in large and small groups, right? And, uh, and, and, uh, and I can't help thinking uh, about uh, uh, your children and my children. And if someone really wanted to take them away from us, I think I would lose my mind. This is the most disturbing thing I've ever encountered in my life. So being here today, making a presence today, we're going to march up the street. There's folks waiting for us up there. We, we uh, Father Pat and, and, um, and Eric organized this as a donation drop-off, and somehow it got published as a rally, right? So, uh, so since we're Catholic, we love processions, so we're good at that. Right? So we thought we would just make a parade out of this, right? And anyways, so, uh, so there are people who have some signs that brought for us other organizations of, of like-minded people who have joined us. So we're going to ask you if you would do that with us. And uh, in seminary, they teach us Gregorian chant, and there's eight modes, uh, depending on the solemnity. And, uh, but it's only one note. So the scholar master would come over to me, and he'd say, Brother, I want you to mouth the words. And I would say, Father, it's only one note. And he said, Yes, but you never hit it. So, so it doesn't matter if you have a voice or you don't. Please uh, join us in this wonderful hymn that unites us uh, in our solidarity against this overarching injustice and these immoral acts. So I'm going to ask our associate minister who has the most melodic voice you have ever heard. So uh, if you'll if lead us. And folks, and then, uh, Judy, if you can lead us up and around, that would be wonderful. Thank you. So let's all sing together. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome.
it's okay. stay in touch with each other. I would just ask if you haven't yet, if you could sign in down at the church. We're just going to get in touch with you to keep you informed for this issue. Nothing else, okay? And um, at that, I'd like to ask George if you'd like to take it from there. So, so Mother Judy, why don't you, if you, know the, if you know this song, let's just sing it. Let there be peace on earth. Let there be peace on earth, heaven to begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be.
step I take, let this be my soul, then vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Thank you all. Thank you all. So I know it's hot and it's very sunny, but what we did this morning is uh, certain, uh, certain folks from you, all of you, maybe spoke about some work that you're doing that we can support. Our parish, St. Francis of Assisi, Father Pat, Father Gidi, uh, uh, Deacon Bernardo, and Father Andres, we celebrate Mass uh, at Essex County uh, Jail for the ICE detainees. We've been doing that probably for the last eight years. Just so you know, this is nothing new. This taking children uh, from families seems to have escalated it up a whole lot uh, more than we ever expected. But we participate in being able to celebrate uh, the holy sacrifice of the Mass with those uh, by the way, these people are not criminals. They, uh, they are simply uh, ICE detainees. Some of the people that we have been ministering to have been there for over two years. I often think about the fact that I just moved from that side of the yard to this side under the shade. There are people in these, in these facilities who have absolutely no freedom to even change uh, or, or uh, uh, operate in a way that allows them to even change their own temperatures in some ways, right? And so when we come together here, not only are we protesting uh, that kind of injustice, but this injustice that incarcerates people uh, who are seeking asylum in a better way of life. So that's what we do. We've been doing that for eight or 10 years. I'm not sure if anyone here is doing something or if you want to say something, we would most welcome that. So please. <laughs> You all must be good Catholics. Nobody's making eye contact, right? <laughs> Nobody's making eye contact. Anything? That's all right. You're here. That's the most important thing, well, right? That's the most important thing. I'm going to be mostly off camera. All right. But I was uh, already a teenager, I think, and I went to a scout meeting. And um, uh, after the scout meeting, my father was to pick me up. What? Louder. You're telling me to be louder? My father was supposed to pick me up at, at the church where the meeting was, and he was late. I was a teenager. I knew the neighborhood. Nothing was threatening me. And I was scared. I felt terrible. And I knew my father was going to come. I can't imagine. I can't imagine how these young children feel when, oh, we're just going to take you for a bath and they never return to their parents. That sense of separation, a sense of, uh, I don't know, uh, helplessness is just more than, I, more than I could get my hands around. So that's what I've been thinking about these past weeks and also thinking about my grandchildren and wondering how they would be if they were put in that position. And I don't want to be crazy about this, but if a government can put these children in that position, who knows what happens next? Absolutely. So, Absolutely. 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 Please, please come over. Come say something. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, hold on. Sorry, I have, oh. I have trouble with my leg. Um, I'm a lawyer. Don't hate me. Um, <laughs> Right now, there are a lot of lawyers in this country who have stepped up and are stepping up. Just so you know, because the media has done a very poor job of providing accurate information or any information really about the legal status of people, anybody who is physically in the United States, children included, have certain constitutional rights. They have a right to due process, they have a right to equal protection, they have a right against unreasonable searches and seizures. Now, children as well, when they are, when their parents are arrested 
have certain rights, okay? And those are due process rights. And for the most part, courts look at the best interests of the children. So this is the basis under which a lot of the lawsuits, and there are multiple lawsuits going on right now, and there have been multiple rulings. There's currently an injunction issued by a district court in San Diego that is nationwide that gives the Trump administration a very limited period of time to reunite all the families. And it's expected that they will not do that and they will violate the injunction. So my request is that you find a lawyer, lawyers, if you don't know of any, find your local ACLU chapter and support them in any way that you can because they're doing big suits and they're doing individual suits. They're posting bond for people who, adults who are in detention. There's one group in particular in Texas called, uh, it's spelled R-A-I-C-E and they've raised $20 million to post bond for adults. So those are things that you can do. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you very much. At, at this morning's rally, we were also encouraged to vote. There was someone here, Charles. Where is Charles? Charles, please say something if you would. Hi, how are you everybody? First off, just wanted to note that if anybody wants to grab some more visibility, some signs with the message, uh, come and see me. I have plenty of these. I also have voter registration forms because while we definitely want to have a show of force and show the community is really, <laughs> really against what is happening at the federal level right now, uh, really one way that we can scare these representatives into putting their foot down uh, to stopping this type of barbarism really is making sure that we all get out there and vote, making sure that we're all registered. I have voter registration forms. I have forms to sign up to, to vote by mail, which we can thankfully do in this state here. So I heard 45 days early. Uh, you can submit it by mail. Uh, you, the ballot, so um, uh, the form there is you can you send it in a couple weeks in advance. I think 45 is actually a little too far out um, I am blanking on the exact deadline there, but I have all those forms all the instructions on it Please come and see me if you guys yourself I'm sure the vast majority of people who are participating in this event today are probably registered, which is awesome Thank you very much, but all of your neighbors friends 18 year old kids, you know anybody, you know come and see me I vote a registration form. So thank you and, uh, the name of the group that uh, I'm with here today, we didn't organize the rally, we just wanted to show up. It's called the Progressive Turnout Project. Yeah. Where's, uh, where's Father Pat? Father Pat, why did you say something about the links on that page? Okay. Uh, both the handout that was available in the church, if you didn't get it, they are still there. If you turn to page three, the first two pages are the actual petition. The third page is uh, part of the email sent by the woman who runs the uh, uh, not-for-profit agency, okay? And if you look down uh, towards the Center for Family Services, if you type that into Google and bring it up, it's in South Jersey. On there, there is a, a site called Juntos, J-U-N-T-O-S. Look that up, it is exactly what we're doing here. It talks about the children that they hold and what they need. So you can go on, it's on page three, and you can just go there yourself and check it. That is where everything that you folks have brought will be going today, okay? And thank you all very, very much. If you would gather, um, I think we are all from very different, um, maybe different faiths, maybe different uh, uh, traditions, but one of the things that uh, is my job uh, that I depend on a lot is prayer. So if you would just, uh, we can just conclude with a, with a short prayer, that would be great, right? God of our mothers and fathers, God of babies and children, youth and teens, the voice of agony echoes across the land as children are taken from their parents, perverting our history as a nation of immigrants, perverting our values, perverting the ways of justice and peace. 
These children wait in misery to be reunited with their families so that a few may reap the political rewards of their suffering by playing tough at our borders. Source of grace, creator of kindness and goodness, you call upon us to stand in the name of justice and fairness, to witness against the abuse of power, to battle the systematic assault on human beings, to speak out against their suffering. Bless those who rise up against this horror. Give them courage and determination. Bless those who plead on behalf of the oppressed and the subjugated before the seats of power. May the work of their hands never falter, nor despair deter them from their holy calling. Bless those who are now in bondage in the hand of the U.S. government. Grant them shelter and solace, comfort and consolation, blessing and renewal. Release them, free them, heal them from trauma, reunite them with their families, hasten the day of their reunion. Blessed are you, God of all being, who summons us to oppose violence, oppression, slavery, and injustice. And we all say, Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you all so much.